Okay, Conic Sections by Ruben Rico, Guadalupe Torre, and Laura Moreno. So what is a conic section? A conic section is a figure form of an intersection of a plane and a right circular cone. Depending on the angle of the plane with respect to the cone on conic section may be a circle, which is right here, an ellipse, a parabola, or a hyperbola. Okay, how it came about. Conic sections have been studied for quite a long time. Kepler first noticed that planets had elliptical orbits. Depending on the energy of an orbiting body, orbit shapes that are any of the four types of conic sections are possible. A conic section can be formally defined as a set of locus of a point that moves in the plane of a fixed point called the focus, and the fixed line is called the directrix. Direct um, the general equation is a x squared plus b x times y plus c y squared plus dx plus e y plus f equals zero and we'll explain um, each equation for the our specific conics so i am going to talk about the hyperbola it is a two-branched open curve a conic section produced by the intersection of a circular cone and a plane that cuts both naps of the cone as a plane curves, it may be defined as the path, the locus, of the point moving so that the ratio of the distance from a fixed point, the focus, to the distance from a fixed line, the directrix, directrix is a constant greater than one. The hyperbola, however, because of its symmetry, has two foci. So I'm going to explain the basic, um, a basic hyperbola and... We're going to, a hyperbola has, it's like a mirrored image. So for example, if we have this here. Um, this is our vertex. I'm gonna name it A. This is our vertex. Then we have our branch vertex, which are these. Branch vertex and then we have C which is right here and I'm going to name this B which is the distance from each other okay a hyperbola is centered at the point HX so HX would be our X and Y um, the point on each branch closest to the center is the branch's vertex, which is these right here. Uh, the vertex are some fixed distance A from the center. So these are fixed and as well C. C is always fixed. Um, the line going from one vertex through the center and ending at other vertex is called the transverse axis. And the foci of a hyperbola are inside each branch and each focus is located some fixed distance C, which is this one, C. Um, that means that A is always less than C. Sorry, A is always less than C. And A and C may vary depending on the hyperbola, but they're always constant. So back to the PowerPoint. The history and fun facts of a hyperbola. So hyperbolas have important reflexive properties. Rays directed towards one focus of a hyperbola are reflected at the hyperbolic mirror. These reflective properties are used in our everyday telescopes, cameras, and tracking systems. So every camera we use has the hyperbola reflexive. A uh, hyperbola has two focus points. The difference of the distance from a point on the ellipse to each focus is always constant. And you can, you can find that by subtracting R2 minus R1, it equals, gives you 2A. Okay, our central, our critical points for a hyperbola are the vertices of foci and the asymptotes. So let's do some examples. So if we have an equation, well, we're gonna find the equation of this hyperbola. We're gonna say that this branch vertex is negative four, zero, which would mean that this one 
is four zero. We're going to, there's a line here and two points here. This one is at three, two, and this one is at four, five. Um, and our asymptote is four, since it's four. Um, our H and K, which is our X and Y, is zero, since these two are zero. So we have zero, zero. And our equation for our hyperbola is X squared over A squared minus y squared over b squared equals y. So we're just going to plug in our information to get our equation for this type of hyperbola. We have a, so we have our h and k, a equals four, this is our a, so a equals four. We need to find b to plug in over here. b, the way we find b is y equals um, B over A X, sorry. Y equals plus or minus B over A X. We know that our A is four. So we're gonna have B over four X plus or minus. To get, we know that our line is going up one and two to three to the side. So we have Oh, sorry, this is supposed to be, this is four. Yeah, it's going up one, two to the side. So we have y equals one over two x. Since our asymptote is four, we want to make this a four. So we're going to multiply by two. Whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top. So now we're going to have two over four x. So that's going to give us, that's our b. 2. So our b is 2. Now we're plugging everything into our original equation. So we have x squared over a squared, or a is 4, a squared minus um, y squared over b squared, our b is 2, equals 1. So we can just solve for this. We have x squared over 16 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. And this would be our equation for this type of hyperbola. Another example is finding the equation when, it's, when we have our graph. So if our equation is, they give us an equation of x squared over 1 squared minus y squared over 1 squared equals 1. So if this is our equation, we know that our center is 0, 0. So our k, oops, hk is 0, 0. And we know that our hyperbola is going to be the same. 0, 0. Since it's 0, 0, it has to be here, 0. And our A, remember this is our A, our original hyperbola equation is A squared minus Y squared over B squared equals 1. So this is our A, our A is 1. So this is going to be negative 1, 0, and 1, 0. Okay, our B is one as well. So we're gonna have another line here and it can be plus or minus, so we can have another one here. And so we have A equals one, sorry, A equals one, B equals one. We're getting them from here. And that's our hyperbola. Okay. Now uh, Lupita will go over the parabola.